This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. Oh, Josh, you're wearing a shirt that says, so lazy, can't move. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like a cat that's upside down. It's a fat cat. Yeah, yeah. this fat cat, these little like legs that look like little stumps. <laughs> Just <laughs> little nubs. <laughs> little nubs sticking off the top. Yeah. That's cute. You have another one that's Snoopy that I really like. It says, nope, not today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I actually do wear them specifically because that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have, again, something very specific that I want to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we know that when you are having conversation with people, with communicating with people, um, you're influenced by what's going on around you. Yes. So we've talked about that a lot. My, the question that I have for you is, what makes it difficult for you to talk on the phone? Because it occurs to me that you can be in your own environment. Mm-hmm. You can be where you're very comfortable, mm-hmm. where there's not a lot going on, except for this conversation back and forth with somebody on the phone. So what happened most recently is that you have been getting a medication through your psychiatrist Mm -hmm. and that psychiatrist is going through more of a holistic approach with what she's doing so she's no longer going to write the prescription for Vyvanse which is for the um, ADD and everybody agrees that it really works yeah for me yes for you the ones that you've tried, I mean, it's the, the best yeah. so far. Yeah. Um, so she's not writing the prescriptions anymore. So we just needed to make a call to have your primary doctor to put in the prescription yeah. for you. And that might be different than other people because we use military um, pharmacy. Mm-hmm. So it's on a base, no problem. You have an ID. Yeah. This prescription. This particular medication they've been filling for you. Yes. It's just that you have to take a paper script when you go. Whenever it was from my psychiatrist, yes. Correct. So the call needed to be put in to the family doctor, the receptionist, and didn't need to talk to the doctor today. Right. But that needed to be, that call needed to happen to request the family doctor. Um, put in a prescription for this particular medicine. Yes. All right. Those kinds of things, you consistently ask for my help in doing. Yes. So what makes it difficult for you to do things like that uh, for yourself? So there's a... I'm... I think there's more to the question that that I'm kind of uh, missing a bit, or that's not being asked or something. I, I, Let me try I, again. No, no, it's I have part of it, and it might actually because I don't think you're aware of aware of what I'm thinking of. Well, duh, you're not aware of what I'm thinking, but <laughs> <laughs> say it. Let's go. Um, let's start there. <clears throat> okay, so for one thing. I think part of it is that you've always helped me whenever it comes to anything involving medication or doctor visits or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think part of it is that I'm, it's familiar to me having you help me with that. Mm -hmm. And... It, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's, it. Well, could you do it? So maybe from based on what you do, what you're saying is that if I said you have to do it, 
you know, I I, I I like having your support. You don't even have to say anything, as long as I if something happens and I can come to you when it's happening. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could do it. Granted, it took years to, for me to do that, but yes. So, those types of things still to this day. Um, when you've tried to do that, when you've done this before with me next to you, mm -hmm. there's a um, it. It seems like it looks um, difficult for you. It looks like it looks frustrating. And sometimes you ask for me to finish it. Yes. You know, to take over. Yes. My question is that the interactions that you have with people face to face, there are an awful lot of um, sensory issues going on because just by the nature of, you know, of, of, me, of communicating with other people, mm -hmm. but you're at work, you're at D&D, &D, you're right. at a grocery store, for, just, you know, as an example. Yeah. So there's all kinds of, you know, sights and sounds and smells and, you know, issues that, that might come up for you. Yeah. But when you're on a phone with somebody, what makes it difficult? Right away, I can say one thing right off the bat, is the lack of information that I'm receiving. It is, there's no visual cues that I've learned to, to use to try, try and help me understand what people are meaning when they're saying things. There's no, uh, the only thing I have to rely on is my hearing. And not having any of those other cues, it's, think of it like, you, there's IMAX movies now that are like, it's, it's, that have surround sound built into the chairs and everything like that. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is... That they're local too. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, they're at a normal theater. You just yeah. have to pay more for it. Okay. <laughs> um, so imagine doing that, then uh, going from becoming accustomed to that kind of thing, and then uh, as compared to using your phone, a tiny little phone on on uh, YouTube or something like that, watching. A movie from the nineteen from the teens, nineteen teens. Nineteen teens, okay. <laughs> Black and white with no sound. Okay. Where they have to literally pause what's what's showing to write what is being said in in what just happened. Mm, got it. Okay. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And it's a huge difference, right? Mm-hmm. So it's Going from something where you have all of these sensory things going on to only visual is comparable. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that you're, you've become so accustomed to, having all of this information around you to make a moment mm -hmm. and having that go down to just... One sense. So. It's. It's. It's not just that. It's difficult to comprehend everything that's going on at once. But once that lack of. Those. Uh, I wouldn't say I've become accustomed to all of the. Everything. Mm -hmm. All at once. It's mm -hmm. that. It's it's very difficult to have all of this information and then you only have a small portion of it. Well, I think what's... I'm surprised by that answer because I know that you worked very, 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 very hard 
to be able to be in circumstances where all of your senses are expected to or you know take something in and and you know filtrate what what's important what isn't yeah. important you know yeah. you know assess maybe a hierarchy of one thing versus another so mm-hmm. like if someone's having well, a con- it, yeah it's it's kind of like a mental uh version of an order of operations and yes right and uh and uh, if then statements Right, so like it's this, this you know, these acrobats that are, <laughs> are, yeah. are taking place, right? Yeah. So what surprises me about that is that, yes, I do understand that you have learned that you have learned to look for these cues. Yes. But as far as how you feel, I don't know that you can... What happens a lot of times is there's so much sensory input that you just need to get out of the situation. So I thought that talking on the phone would be easier because it's just one one thing. And so especially if you don't have to especially if you're giving information. Right. You're not receiving information so much as you are giving information. And so going back to what you know happened today is calling the calling the doctor's, uh, office. Uh, doctor's office, talking to the person at the front desk, mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, this is a situation that I'm having right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to get the medication from the psychiatrist. She's no longer writing scripts. Can can our doctor please write that for me? This is the medication. This is the dosage. Right. There would not be really." For, uh, for us, that's not really an issue because we would get it filled there anyway. And, and uh, right, right. So this is what, right. I, I see what you're saying because we use the pharmacy on the base anyway. Yeah. Or the, the doctor is on the base. Yes. So, right. But what I'm talking about is the information being given. Right. So my question is, which surprises me about your answer already, but... In this particular case, you're giving information more than you're getting information. Right. And so, even if we have something written down, the question to you is, why, what happens and what makes that phone call difficult to, for you? Because I know it is, because I see it happening, and I also know that you're absolutely right when things like this happen. Mm-hmm. I'm nearby. Yeah. And and I, while I do it a lot of times, um, it's because it needs to get done. Mm-hmm. And I say, can you do it? And most of the time you defer back to me and say, could you please do it? Right. And sometimes I get a little bit crabby and I'm like, no, it's <laughs> for you. You do it. And I'm here and I will help you if you need it. Yeah. So here's the question. Okay. What makes it difficult for you to make the phone call in this type of situation? There's at least three things that I can think of right off the top of my head. One is that I don't always know, or if I do know the information, what I'm supposed to give, I don't remember it properly. Okay. And it's, it's not necessarily that I don't remember it even. It's, I'm, it's, not, it's kind of like I'm being put on the spot and I freeze up mm-hmm. kind of a situation. Okay. But it's, uh, it's difficult because, which leads into the second part of it, that because I don't have all of the information that comes with a face-to-face conversation I don't even if it is just just hey can you confirm who you are yeah Mm -hmm. it's still stressful because I don't know if they're going to ask something else or yada 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 and it's just very stressful but (laughs) sure but it's also that I 
because I can't have all of the uh, information uh, from my senses other than hearing with a phone call, it's very difficult for me to, for one thing, tell if someone's joking about something or like if they're asking something, are they being serious about it? Which doctor's offices, no, they wouldn't really do that. But it, it's still a what if kind of thing. Or if then. Okay. So my mind's still going through all those processes, even if it is a fairly straightforward, uh, can you confirm who you are? Yes. And then I give the information. What can, what can I help you with? And I explain the situation. But even before that, which leads into the third thing, is that an automated process to get to that as well. A lot of times is very nerve-wracking to me. Because I, even if the numbers are, are there in order of what they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. a lot of times... It's not even that they change, but they have a, a lot of places will say, uh, please pay attention because the options may have changed. Mm-hmm. And so then you're stressed right off the bat because yes. are they changed? Or are they the same? What am I listening for? Right. So I get it. So when it's automated, you're so focused on when is the important information going to be here and am I going to get it? Right. Am I going to recognize that that's the important information that I need, correct? Right. And it, it it's with a place like calling into the into the base mm-hmm. to talk to a, to the doctor to make a make an appointment or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You still have to go through a number of different uh, uh automated processes. Mm-hmm. And it's such a pain. <laughs> it really is. You know, I think that more people than not are with you on that one. Because I don't know how many times you just scream, you know, not you personally, but people in general scream into the phone, give me a live person. (laughs) You know, like you you are on this automated system forever before you can talk to a human. And sometimes what you need is just slightly different than what all the options were. Right, you know, and, and, and that throws me off. Oh my yeah. gosh. And one of the first, I remember one of the first times that I actually tried to do this thing on my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually whenever we were living in Pennsylvania. And uh, it was, I was trying to fix my Xbox account. And so I called them, up, called them up and tried to talk to someone. I finally, after half an hour, finally got through to someone. And I, I tried to explain what was going on, to what my issue was, and she hung up on me. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We. I can just say to you, we all hate that. <laughs> we hate that. I mean, as a population. Yeah. It is so upsetting it's nerve-wracking it's frustrating it's time-consuming and we all get anxious if not angry yeah at those kind of calls yeah Yeah. it's really frustrating i think um yeah so i get what you're saying so if something is automated you're stressed right off the bat yeah um Because you don't know where that's taking you, what's going to happen. Right. Okay, I got it. Um, So when you speak to a person... Now, we're very fortunate. Um, The the, the ladies that work at the... um, In this particular office... Mm -hmm. um, At the doctor's office, mm -hmm, yeah. Are really good at what they do. Yeah. They're very friendly. Yeah. And um, just it, the, it's always enjoyable having a conversation with them, even if it's about a refill. Right. Okay. So, if you were to be able to bypass the automation, which I now have 
the direct figured number. out their, their direct number. Yeah. So there will be no more automation when it comes to calling the doctor's office. Right. You're saying that because you can't see them, which oh. you do understand that you reading cues from people is huge. Yeah, but it it is also something that didn't come natural to you. Right. So hearing you say that that's something now that you, it's been ingrained. Yeah, and it's not just that it's been ingrained. It's helped me understand what people are are saying without saying it properly. I guess um, it helps with the nonverbal cues. It helps with to tell if someone's joking with me. It's a lot of different information that took years and years, and I'm still having difficulty with it, Mm -hmm. figuring out what people are saying. So, again, when you call in to this... I'll I'll just focus on this particular one, okay? (laughs) Yeah. So, when you call in you're giving more information than you're getting. They are the ones on their end, in this case, taking, writing down on their computer mm-hmm. uh, what it is that you, you're you asking for. What is the request yes. that you have for the doctor? Yes. Hmm, I don't know that. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, uh... Computer, stop. Off. <laughs> I don't like that. That's just... I just unplugged it. I don't know if... I don't know if oh, it's so frustrating. It's creepy, it isn't is, it? It is. I don't know if you guys heard that listening to this, but we no. have... It, it's an Alexa. Yeah. So we have... This one is... Is this one named Computer? Yeah, this one's named Computer because we have an Alexa, we have an Echo, and then we... So otherwise, we're saying different things to our different devices. We named them differently <clears throat> so, so that they, they all don't go off yeah. <laughs> at the same time. What... Why is she being nosy in our conversation? I don't what know. was a, she doesn't even make any sense? It always creeps me out. Like when you have one of these things, yeah, and they just come on. It's just like, it's just like if you're talking about something mm-hmm. random, and then all of a sudden, you get advertisements for that thing on your computer. That on wasn't... your computer, oh. yeah, yeah. It's so messed up. It is. It is. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was the distraction. That... <laughs> no, I wanna... I'm glad you unplugged her. I'm going to put her in timeout for a while. <laughs> ah, that's frustrating. Okay, so let me get back to this. <laughs> if you are calling in and your, your, your goal is to give information, mm-hmm. what feels difficult in that scenario, even if you're talking to a live person? What causes anxiety for you? Because it's not about whether you can do it or you can't do it. Because because I, I have the ability to do it, yes. Mm-hmm. It's the doing it, the process of it, that is difficult, yeah. So it's stressful to, yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, why is that stressful? So part of it is that it's it doesn't talking to someone well let me let me start a little bit smaller texting mm. so if if I'm reading something I've sent you texts before where I'm where I mean one thing mm. And it is taken completely differently. Well, I'll just give an example. So if you were to send one word, mm-hmm. what? If it was all caps and exclamation, or is that yelling? <laughs> is that like, what? Is that is it, like... Is it angry or is it uh, like surprise? Like, what? Or, yeah. <laughs> There's right. there's so many ways yeah. that it can be taken. I get you. I get you. Yeah, texts are very um, ambiguous. Yes. At best, and just like email. 
which is one of the reasons why I try to actually write in full sentences and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, I have to rewrite what I'm about to send because I know that it can be taken in a, in a way I don't want it to. Because mm -hmm. you've become accustomed to being very specific, as yes. specific as possible. Yes. And you've learned that other people need clarity mm -hmm. in order to understand what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. And that goes verbal communication as well. Yes. Yeah. But with this, there is no audio, it's only visual. With a phone call, it's only audio, no visual. Mm -hmm. And it can be just as confusing. Because I don't know, regardless of what the call's about, I don't know if, it is, if someone is prank calling me. I don't know if someone is playing a joke on me or with me or anything like that because I don't have those visual cues that I've come to learn and rely on. If you are calling a doctor's office... I'm saying in general. Okay. Yeah, not... Okay. Yeah. Right. So I get what you're saying. It's just like, for you, it's just like any other interaction. You don't know... It's, I guess to put it this way, you've... There's been enough times where you ultimately have felt uncomfortable because you didn't understand the situation. You didn't understand what was being asked of you. You right. didn't understand if it, there was a uh, a joke. Right. You know, um, it's right. So you just it, it it's been difficult for you to read other people to know how to respond. Right. Um, I just read something um, earlier today. Um, by a, a different person that uh, is autistic and they were pointing out how and we've talked about humor before mm -hmm. how um, everybody's joking around and poking fun at each other and just you know a group of friends having a good time mm -hmm. well then they tried to do it and like the, the, what they were hearing from one another is just like the in fun you know yeah Banter. Po poke, yeah, and poking at each other and just, you know. Yeah. And so then they tried, and then everybody else is like, why would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> what was, why is it, and, and they were like, I thought, I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this feeling of like. Trying, so trying to, trying to, to participate, and it doesn't work. Right, 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 and yeah. so I just read that about you know from this other uh, person, and I thought, yeah, it's it's so difficult. That's something that you know that you've explained before how you don't know what's expected of you. Right, you don't know kind of just what's what's appropriate sometimes. What it, it, it when is the time for what right. is it right. serious? Is it you're supposed to be funny, right. or you know, all of that. Um, so that that reminded me that regardless of how much you know, and 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 how hard you've worked to to understand social cues, yeah. that can still be difficult. Yeah. Um, is it? When you're going to call an office and give them just straightforward information, um, why is just that call, um, why create anxiety? Part of it is, to me at least, is that it's... It's for, for lack of, but I don't know what the proper words are, but uh, approximately it's for official use. Um, it's not just calling up a friend. 
and just talking to him. Okay. It is uh, business calls. Mm -hmm. um, it's important. It not that. No. Sure. So what you're saying is that if you have the perception that the information that you're giving is going to be used somehow to to make something happen. And I don't want to, for it to be a misinformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, if I if I say something wrong, I don't want for it to be portrayed as that. I get it. Like the psychologists and psychiatrists yeah, right. have in the past, right? Where they focus on that and not, yeah. Okay. So it so the anxiety comes up because you you don't want to to you don't want to give the wrong information. Yeah. So before you ever make the call you feel anxious yeah yeah even if i know what what i need to say doesn't mean it's going to come out right doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's yeah it, it's very difficult mm -hmm. and it's, it's stressful so and does it take an awful lot for you to get through the calls yeah it really does. Um, the one thing that I've noticed whenever I'm whenever I finish one of those calls, when I'm able to, is you know I you know uh, I know that whenever you get like a jump scare or whatever it's called. You hate that feeling. Oh, yeah. Because it's the adrenaline let down oh. and everything. Oh, yeah. That's kind of what I feel is almost an adrenaline let down. Got it. And it's... I hate it. <laughs> I really yeah. do. Right. And it, it's so... Uh. <laughs> you just shivered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just thinking about it, right? Uh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. What's what's funny is that uh, when you talk about the different sensory input, right? Mm -hmm. I it's just so funny because um, there's like a joke, but it's totally true about how you're driving someplace, you don't know where you're going, so you're looking to make sure, and you turn down the radio so that you can see, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, so you can yeah. see where you're, go where you're going. At, yeah. yeah, it's it's um, it's one of those kind of things where yeah. like. It's it's almost psychosomatic, I yeah. think is the, is the term. Yeah, and there's input, and it can feel overload because if you don't know where you're going, you're trying to find it, you can't find it, you know. And you're becoming stressed and overloaded. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you take one away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's what I'm constantly living with. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just take it away. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I joke about that, but it's true. All right. I I am constantly living with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. So it. So for me to. Maybe not become used to, but being accustomed to and knowing how all of this information comes together. Mm-hmm. And then. Only, ha only being able to have a part of that come through in a phone call, mm -hmm. let alone a, a an important call like calling a doctor. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Well, it seems to me that that what happens that I see f you physically dealing with is that there's. Apprehension mm -hmm. to even make a call, mm -hmm. and then when you're on the call, sometimes you will freeze and not know what else to say, right? Not know what to do, right? If a question is asked that you are not prepared for, prepared for that's a good way to put it, yeah. You, you, that's a lot of times at that point is when you ask me to take over, yes. Um, and I can tell. That you are not comfortable, you know, that, that, that essentially I can look at you and say, oh, you're not okay. 
right, right. <laughs> you're not okay right now. Yeah, and that's honestly one of the reasons I like to have you accompany me whenever I am on one of these phone calls. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, a, a mm-hmm. com- yeah. That's, yes, that's it, right. The wording may sound strange, but it's correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything that makes it better? Uh, have you do the phone calls? <laughs> <laughs> Short of having me do the phone calls for you, is there anything that helps? Having you there to support me if needed. Mm-hmm. Because it happens a lot where I have to hand you the phone. Mm-hmm. And so I write stuff down, but you have, so then it looks like like you have a script on your side, right? Yeah. You, you have the, the thing that you're going to ask for, mm-hmm. and then they will ask something that you didn't expect, or they will ask, you off. Or they will ask what I'm trying, the, they'll ask about something about the information that I'm giving them that is slightly off from what I'm trying to say. And getting the wording back right and back to answer that properly mm-hmm. is very, uh, it throws me off so much that I have to hand the phone to you. Mm-hmm. This conversation is physically making you uncomfortable. It is. Today. It is, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I see that. Yeah. So just the thought of making the phone call is really creating anxiety. Yeah. Even talking about this scenario. Yeah. Uh, that especially started after uh, that you saw me shiver. It, I'm, yeah. st- I'm still kind of feeling that. So it's really making me kind of uncomfortable and jittery, I guess. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, so we don't want to, we don't want to, to, to prolong that, that feeling. So, you know, let's, let's. Finish up so yeah, that yeah. you don't have to continue feeling that way because it's not, it certainly doesn't look comfortable. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you want to share about this, or should we just be done because that's enough? Uh, I'm sure there's more of it, but I can't think of it. Okay, um, you just want to be done. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, uh, I got gotcha. you. But for everyone listening, please, if you have more uh, questions or want something clarified about it that'll really help if for next podcast i think but okay you need this to be you're i've never seen you react this way in a podcast you are so up, up, yeah. uncomfortable right now yeah I yeah am. okay all right everybody thank you so much for hanging out with us um um, a jo- Josh, give you an applause. Thank you for sharing that. I know that it was just miserable for you to even talk about this. Um, thank you. So um, thank you for, for helping us to understand that. Um, everybody, uh, please listen uh, to us and uh, go to my po- my uh, website, sonyaking.com, um, S-O-N-Y-A-K-I-N-G, and um, um, give us five stars wherever you hear us. And um, check back often. We, we've, we've missed some um, blogs and some artwork that we're putting up for to accompany past um, podcasts when, you know, things were going crazy around here. We just, yeah. you know, di- didn't have the time for that. So we're going to go back and, and add those. Um, I'm going to start posting every week on Facebook and um, Twitter. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not, but uh, apparently some people have that's their choice that's their their um sites to go to that's their preference is what i'm trying to say so i'll start sharing um weekly the podcast and the blog and the artwork on those sites but um anyway uh thanks for hanging out with us again and um i hope that you're happy and healthy and having a great day love you bye